صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق الرسول النبي الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, It's a pleasure and honor to have uh, Sheikh Ahmed Didat with us again here in Nairobi and I'm sure uh, we are going to learn a lot about what he is going to tell us but before that maybe I'm sure each and every one of you knows Sheikh Ahmed Didat but Sheikh Ahmed Didat, when he was speaking to us at Sarali, at uh, South Sea Mosque, he pointed one thing, and that is, we must read, we must read. And he emphasized that. He said, all these talks of his are not for pleasure. They are to make us learn more. And you only learn by reading. Now, Ahmed, Sheikh Ahmed Didat, one thing about Sheikh Ahmed Didat, whatever he says, he has ready quotation, either from the Holy Quran or from the Bible. So nobody can challenge him because whatever he says, he has proof, and the proof which is in black and white. Uh, I'm sure you will listen attentively and when you have questions, you, are, you will be welcome to ask the questions. As for the ladies, uh, pieces of paper will be sent to you. And those of you who have some questions, those uh, questions will be collected and will be read on your behalf. Now, I think it is my pleasure and honor to ask Sheikh Ahmed Didat to address us all. Sheikh Ahmed Didat. قال رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ قالت الملائكة يا مريم إن الله استفاك ومتحرك واستفاك على نساء العالمين صدق الله صدق الله العظيم Mr. Chairman and my dear brothers and sisters the topic for this evening's discussion is Christ in Islam. When for the very first time in my own country I mooted the subject Christ in Islam, there was a consternation among the Christians of my country. Christ in Islam. They began to wonder whether we Muslims have another Christ in opposition to Jesus Christ. So I had to assure my audience, and if there are any Christian brethren in the audience, I assure them here and now, that we have not got another Christ. There is only one Christ, and that is Jesus Christ. Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus the son of Mary, he is the Christ. But some of our brethren, they have some fears about this word Christ. They think Christ is synonymous with crucifixion. Because the Christian is always talking Christ crucified, Christ crucified. So they think Christ and crucified are synonymous terms. But they are not. Christ comes from the Hebrew word Messiah. Arabic, Masih. The Quran speaks about him. Masih who is Ibn Maryama. Masih, Messiah in Hebrew, Arabic Masih. Translated into Greek. This Hebrew word, Messiah, Messiah, translated into Greek, it becomes Christos. But the us is too un, un, unfamiliar to the Western world, so they cut off the us and left with Christ. This is the translation of the Hebrew word and the Arabic word, Messiah, Messiah. What does it mean? You see, we Muslims, we made our Salat just now. Before Salat, we make ablution, wudu. 
And during the wudu, we wet our hands and we rub them over. Our heads, our hair, and the nape of the neck, and the ears. What do you call that? Huh? Masah. We call it Masah. Masah means to rub over. Masi means one who is rub over. Priests and kings were anointed, rubbed over with holy oil. So from today, you are our Imam. From today, you are our leader. From today, you are our king. Anointed, meaning officially appointed. That's what it means, nothing more than that. And priests and kings were anointed in consecration to the office. And the Holy Bible uses that word Messiah, Messiah, Christ, dozens of times. In the Holy Bible, you'll come across the word anointed, anointed, anointed. But in the original Hebrew is Messiah, 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 anointed. They do not translate every the word that's Messiah as Christ. They translate it as anointed. But priests and kings had been anointed, been made Messiah. Pots and pans, pots and pans were anointed, says the Bible. In Hebrew, Messiah. Pots and pans, horns, horns of the anointed, of the Messiah, horns. Cyrus, Cyrus, a pagan, a mushir king, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, it speaks about him, that he is the anointed. A mushrik, anointed. In Hebrew, Messiah. In Greek, Christ. But the Christians do not translate it so. They translate as anointed, so you do not think. Only when it comes to Jesus, they translate as Christ. Christ. But this word Christ is a common name, common term, applied in the Bible to priests and kings and even mushrik rulers, mushriks. The Holy Bible. So Christ doesn't mean God and doesn't mean the Son of God. It means one who is officially appointed. As such, we Muslims believe that Jesus is the Christ. We Muslims believe, without any persuasion, that Jesus was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe in his miraculous birth. We believe that he is the Messiah, the Messiah translated Christ. And we believe that he gave life to the dead by God's permission and he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. We believe. You're not a Muslim if you don't believe these things. But when we tell this to the Christians in my country, it's an ocean of Christianity, my country. We Muslims are less than 2% of the South African population. For every 100, there's only two Muslims. For every 100, there's only two Muslims. So in that ocean of Christianity, if we try to curry favor, trying to be nice with the Christian, that you know if we can say a few good words about your Jesus, you in turn might say a few good words about our Muhammad That if I scratch your back, you scratch my back. Yeah, I say you are very nice, so you say you are also very nice. We say no, 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 we don't do things like that. We don't tell you about Jesus for these reasons, that you may say a few good words about Muhammad. This is what am I speaking is on the authority of the Holy Quran, Allah's Kalam. In the ayah I read to you from the Holy Quran, from Surah Ali Imran. Surah Ali Imran. In this book, this encyclopedia called the Quran. If you have a translation, where do you find it? 2,000 pages. A veritable encyclopedia. How are you going to find Imran? Paging to Imran, Imran. You might have just skipped it. Imran, Imran, Imran. And you go through the whole volume and you didn't find it. How do you find it? Beautiful. This particular one has an index, a very comprehensive index at the back. You go to the index, just like a dictionary, and look for Imran, I-M-R-A-N, Imran, and the I, and it'll tell you chapter three. Three is easy to find, because every chapter is numbered. Every page is numbered. Three is easy to find. Once you have found chapter three, Surah three, and now I'm telling you that the ayah I read is ayah number 42. Ayah 42. 42 is also easy to find because every verse is numbered. 
You found it? Yes, you'll find it. Now, I, I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, that when anybody, any speaker, makes any reference from the Holy Quran, and if he gives you reference, make a point of going home and checking up. Not that you're doubting the speaker, that the speaker had any reason to bluff you, to deceive you. No, no, no. You don't mistrust people on the face. Prima first, we take everybody to be honest, straightforward. Man gives you a reference as a Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 42. Go home and check it up in your English translation if you have, or the Swahili translation if you have. Go and check it up. See it with your own eyes, read it with your heart and mind, and try to absorb the meaning. It's a confirmation of what the speaker had told you. So that knowledge becomes a part of your own property, and you in turn will be able to share with others. That's the secret. The reason is that I want you to share this. You just hear, listen, and get entertained, and you go away, say wonderful speech, MashaAllah, MashaAllah, and finish, gone. No, no, no. Take the trouble of going home and checking up. The ayah I read to you, it reads, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ Behold, the angel said, O oh Mary. Who is Mary? Huh? The mother of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. The mother of Jesus Christ. وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اسْتَفَاكِ وَتَحَّرَكِ وَاسْتَفَاكِ عَلَى نِسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ That Allah has chosen thee, chosen you, purified you, chosen you above the women of all nations. This is the Quran talking. Not the Bible, the Quran is saying. Mary, the mother of Jesus. The Quran says, Allah says, she is a woman chosen above the women of all nations. And it's, a, it's surprising. It is a surprising thing. Who's speaking? The Holy Prophet Muhammad. An Arab. An Arab is speaking. And this Arab is provoking other Arabs. This Arab is provoking the Jews. The Jews were a powerful force in Medina at the time of our Prophet They insinuated in the Jewish Talmud, the holy book of the Jews, they say that a Roman soldier by the name of Pandera, he raped Mary and that illegitimate child of hers was given off as the son of God. That is the Jewish Talmud. The Christians embrace the Jews. They say they killed him as an imposter and as a false prophet. The Christians embrace the Jews. We, we say Mary, the mother of Jesus, she was a woman chosen above the women of all nations. By saying that, Muhammad وسلم, is provoking the Jews because it's not suitable to what they believe. And he's provoking the other Arabs. That this Arab is honoring a Jewess, a nation that was looking down upon the Arabs for 3,000 years. They still look down upon them today. The Jews, they look down upon the Arab cousins. Okay, these are the children of Hagar, Bibi Hajra, Hagar. They said they are the Hagarines, Hagarines. And the religion is Hagarism. They won't say Islam is Hagarism. They still look down upon the Arabs. They said, Father Abraham had two wives, Sarah and Hajra. Sarah was his legitimate wife. Hajra was a born woman, a slave woman, a woman from Africa. As such, her children count for nothing. They are rubbish. The Jews, they look down upon the Arabs. And yet this Arab is honoring a Jewess. I'm asking the Christians and the Jews account for that. Account for that. Why would an Arab go out of his way to provoke his own people? He doesn't say, my mother, or my wife, or my daughter. She is the greatest woman, the best woman in the world. No, 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 no. He said, Maryam, the mother of Jesus, she is a woman chosen above the women of all nations. Account for that. The accounting is there. The Quran continues. وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اسْتَفَاكِي 
وطهرتي واستفاك على نساء العالمين يا مريم مغنوتي لربك واسجدي ورك ايمان راقين سو ام ميري ورشيب ذا لورد ديفاوتلي بروستريت ذا سيلف اند باو داون ان برير وذ ذوز هو باو داون ذلك من انباء الغيب نوحيه اليك ذا سورس اوف ذيس انسبيريشن ذلك من انباء الغيب ذيس از بارت اوف ذا تايدينجز اوف ذا ثينجز ان سين which we allah says reveal unto you o messenger by inspiration zalika min anbai alghaybi nuhihi ilayka wa ma kunta ladayhim is is tasma that you were not there you were not there o muhammad when they cast lots with arrows as to which of them should be charged with the care of mary nor were thou with them when they disputed the point the story is that the mother of maryam she was barren no children for a long time so she prays to allah for a child and she is tempting allah she is tempting allah said look ya allah you give me a baby i will dedicate my baby for temple services for your service for your ch- church for the house of god i will dedicate my child thinking that she is going to get a son a boy allah heard her prayer and a child was born but the child happened to be a girl a female and in no way is a female like the male for temple services what is she to do she had vowed she had made a qasam that i'm going to dedicate my child for temple services so when the child is big enough to look after herself she takes the baby to the temple she says now who will look after this child to serve you clean up the thing for you prepare your food for you everything that this child will do for you for the priests now every priest who saw this child this girl beautiful girl maryam every ch- per- priest said i will look after her i will be a godfather to the child that is i will be a godfather to the child and everybody can be a godfather so they started to say look let's cast lots let us toss the coin so to say head or tail and that casting of lots it came to the turn of zakaria that he was he won the toss so when he won the toss there was an argument in things like this there's always arguments you know when you play a game of dice you throw and you got sixes no no you're not fair you know you didn't throw it properly this is man when somebody wins we are always complaining so no 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 you didn't throw it properly you know you you cheated me it was a dispute so allah is telling our nabi through the quran telling us that oh muhammad you were not there when they cast lots with arrows as to which of them should be charged with the care of mary no you were there when they disputed the point how do you know this is given to you by inspiration this is the word of allah allah is giving to you you had no knowledge about this you are an ummi and learned person you didn't have recourse to the christian or, or jewish scriptures the jews and the christian they say muhammad copied the book muhammad copied it the quran i am asking what is there to copy to copy would be to copy to plagiarize steal somebody else's literature the jews say the jesus is the illegitimate child muhammad copied that no what is there to copy he's telling you in the quran what is not mary is no more than a messenger قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ Many were the messengers that passed away before him, meaning they were mortal, they were subject to death. This man, Jesus, also will be subject to death. مَا الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمَا إِلَّا رَسُولُ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ وَأُمُّهُ سِدِّيكَ And his mother was a virtuous woman, a saintly woman. The mother of Jesus, Allah says, مَا الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمَ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِ الرُّسُلِ وَأُمُّهُ صِدِّيقَةٌ كَانَا يَأْكُلَانِ الطَّعَامَ and they both ate food what's so wonderful about that we all eat food don't we huh is nice no what allah is drawing your attention this is she is a goddess jesus is a god but allah says they both had food how can they be gods because if you eat food you have a call of nature you run to the toilet does god run to the toilet no that's this trying to tell you said look they all both had food he doesn't say just run to the toilet 
and there's no toilet run behind the bush, rush be run behind the rocks. No, no. God doesn't speak that language. He says they both have food to tell you that they, they have to call up nature. Does God have call of nature? Does he run to the toilet or the bush? No. See, see how we are making our science clear to you. How simple Allah is putting it to you. Have another look. Look, see, and give it another look. Summanzur and Najufikun, how they have deviated from the path. Simple, straightforward logic. That this man was a messenger of God. He was a human being, like any other human being. No doubt a mighty miracle worker, a great prophet, but human, human, human. Eating food, running through the toilet, that's not the quality of God. This is how the Quran speaks. What is there to copy? So we in the house of Islam, when this good news is given to her, about the birth of the Holy Son. She says, Qalat yakunu li waladun walam yamsasni bashar. She says, Oh my Lord, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? Sexually. Otherwise, her uncle, her grandfather, as she grew up, everybody's touching her, fondling her, making her to sit on the lap. <laughs> Not that. This touch means sex. No man has touched me. How can I have a baby? How can I have a son when no man has touched me sexually? So the angel says in reply, Even so, Allah creates what He wills. Whenever He decrees a matter, He merely says to it, Be and it is. For Allah to create a Jesus without a human father, just like that. He wants to create a million Jesuses without father, without mother. Just like that. That is our Allah. But a million Jesus without father, without mother, who's going to change the napkins? Who's going to breastfeed them? No, no. So Jesus needed a mother. He had a mother. What does that make him into a God? Or the son of God? No, nothing of the kind. This is the miracle. This is God's creation. He creates anything what he likes just like that. Now, this is the Quranic concept of the birth of Jesus. What is the Christian concept? You see, the Christians also say that Jesus Christ was born miraculously. We are agreed. The Muslims and, and the Christians are agreed that Jesus was born miraculously, without any male intervention. But the language in which they say it, <laughs> I had an occasion of visiting the Bible house in Johannesburg. I was out there looking for an Indonesian Bible. It was in 1977. Indonesian Bible. You see, I have a habit that when I go to a foreign country, a strange country, I try to learn the language of the people a little bit. That I can start sharing with them a few words and create a bond, a relationship, you know, that I love you people. I, I'm honoring your language by speaking your language. So I was looking for an Indonesian Bible. So I go to the Bible house and browsing through the Bibles, different Bibles in my country, very sophisticated country, I come across a New Testament in Greek and English. Like this Quran is Arabic and English. That one was Greek and English. Expensive book, expensive volume. I picked it up. Then I found a type of King James Version. I picked that up. Then I got the Indonesian Bible. I picked that up. But I didn't know that I was being watched. Somebody was watching me. The supervisor said, this Indian fellow with a funny headgear and this beard, what is he doing with all these Bibles? So he walks up to me, an elderly gentleman. He's asking me my interest in these books. I says, no, I'm doing comparative religion. That's my interest in these books. And I says, you know, we believe in Jesus. And he's surprised. He said, look, you meant having a cup of tea with me? I said, not at all. He says, come into my office. So I went into his office. He ordered some tea. And I started to chat with him. I said, we believe in Jesus. 
as one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe in his miraculous birth. We believe in his many miracles, including those of giving life to the dead by God's permission, of healing those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. And the guy couldn't believe his ears. That's what I'm telling him. So I started reading him the Quran. Again, from the Holy Quran. Behold, the angel said, O Mary, verse 45 of Surah Al Imran. That Allah gives you glad tidings of a word from him. Is Muhul Masih. His name will be the Messiah, translated Christ. Is Muhul Masih, who is Abn Maryama, Jesus, son of Mary, Wajihan fit dunya wal akhira, held in honor in this world and in the hereafter, Wamin al Mukarrabin, and of the company of those nearest to God. Or you call him NASA, and he will speak to the people. Fil Mahdi wa Kahlan in childhood and in maturity. Wa min al-Salihin, and he shall be of the company of the righteous. And the guy couldn't believe. He couldn't believe. He said, "This, what you're telling me, is the same as my book, same as my Bible." And really, really, if you show any Christian. The Quran that I'm reading to you, the verses I'm reading to you, if you just show the person in English, without the Arabic, in a hundred years, no Christian will guess that he's reading the Quran. No Christian. What I'm reading to you, behold, the angel said, O Mary, God has chosen you and purified you, chosen you above the women of all nations. O Mary, worship thy Lord devoutly, prostrate thyself and bow down and pray with those who bow down. He's reading this and never guess he's reading the Quran. If he's a Roman Catholic, he will say maybe this is a Protestant version. The Protestant will think maybe it's the Catholic version of the Bible that you're reading. Maybe it's the Greek Orthodox version of the Bible that you're reading. Maybe it's a New World Translation of the Christian that you're reading. But he'll never guess you're reading the, he's reading the Quran. You know why? It is so close to his heart. It's only when he sees Arabic, he is taken aback. He thinks, well, no, this is an enemy book now. See, now he is he's on guard. But if he reads English, you watch. The guys, at times, even when you read Arabic and you translate, tears well up in their eyes. There are good Jews and good Christians. Allah says, Min humul mu'minuna wa aksaruhumul fasikun. Among them, the Jews and the Christians, there are good people. There are sincere, devoted people. People who appreciate Muslim virtues. But the majority of them are perverted transgressors. They are troublemakers, looking for trouble, brawling, looking for a fight. There are people, two kinds. So after reading this, he says, the same as my book. I say, yes, on the face of it. We are both trying to say the same thing. That Jesus Christ was born miraculously, without any male intervention. But the language in which these both are talking, I say they are Bones apart, the chalk and cheese. The difference between the two, the biblical version and the Quranic version is chalk and cheese. You know chalk? You people know chalk? Huh? You know chalk? Yeah. Your masters, teachers use, you know? In Canada they didn't know. I'm talking to the Canadian audience, I say chalk and cheese. They didn't know that expression. They know crayon, crayon, not chalk. They don't say chalk. <laughs> That's a crayon and cheese. Doesn't make sense. I say chalk and cheese means pulls apart. Pulls apart. The Quran says, for God to create a Jesus without a human father, it says just like that. Kun for your kun. Your Bible says, when the same thing, the good news was given to Maryam alayhi salam, she says, how can this thing be when I know not a man, meaning sexually? So the angel says in reply, and the Holy Ghost will come upon thee. And the power of the Most High will overshadow thee. That gives you an animal picture. Holy Ghost is a person in Christianity. They say the Holy Trinity, the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. But they are not three gods, but one God. The Father is Almighty, the Son is Almighty, and the Holy Ghost is Almighty. But they are not three Almighty, but one Almighty. It continues, the catechism is that the Father is a person, the Son is a person, and the Holy Ghost is a person, but they are not three persons, but one person. The Holy Ghost is a person. That person is going to come on Mary. So, 
you are giving ideas to the atheists and the agnostics to beat you with. So how, will the, how did the Holy Ghost come on Mary? How? Like a cow or a, like a bull or a man? How? So we know it doesn't mean that. But the language, the language is using the Holy Ghost is going to come on her and Almighty God is going to overshadow her. How? How? Is down to earth, earthly language. I'm asking the Reverend, the Reverend Benkers by name, a retired Reverend. I said, between these two versions, the Quranic version and the Biblical version, which would you prefer to give to your daughter? Which version would you prefer? Both are trying to say the same thing. We are trying to say the same thing, that he was born miraculous. But the language that this one is using and that other one is using, the language, which would you prefer to give to your daughter? And he bowed his head down in shame and he said, I would prefer to give the Quranic version. Now this is the opportunity for us Muslims. If you have the Quran, a translation, make it a point. Make an investment. Wallah is the best investment you can make. This translation by Abdullah Yusuf, the English is so superb. You don't have to read Shakespeare or Milton to improve your English even. As if the English itself is an inspiration. It is not. No Westerner can believe that an Oriental could have written this language. It's a masterpiece of the English language. As a piece of literature, it's a masterpiece. Just forgetting for a moment that it's Allah's Kalam. It's Allah's Kalam. But even from the literary point of view, it's a masterpiece of writing. You owe it to yourself. And to know the Quran firsthand. What does Allah say? What does Allah say? Index. Where you come, anything you want to know. You want about Jesus, everything about Jesus in the Quran. He spoke it of no less than 25 times in the Quran by name. Isa, Isa ibn Maryam, Isa, Isa, 25 times. Whereas our Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's only spoken of five times. Did you know that? In this vast volume, Isa, Jesus, is by name spoken of 25 times. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, the recipient of this divine revelation, only five times. Four times as Muhammad and one time as Ahmad. Altogether five. Jesus Christ, five times the amount that Muhammad Sallallahu name is mentioned, his name is mentioned. Five times. What does that mean? What does that mean? Jesus is more important than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is greater than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mm -hmm. Jesus had a problem. Jesus had a problem. His people, the Jews, they say he's the illegitimate child of Mary. He's a bastard child of Mary. Allegations, charges, false charges, slander, calumny against Jesus and his mother. So Allah comes to the defense. Allah comes to the defense. Therefore, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Why? Because he needed protection. Muhammad sallallahu sallam, there was no question about his birth, about his parentage, who his mother was, who his father was. Accepted universally. So there was no reason for Allah Baritala revealing that, you know, Muhammad, my servant, my messenger, his father's name was Abdullah, his mother's name was Amina. Unnecessary. In the case of Jesus, it was necessary to clear his name and his mother's name so Allah Baritala comes to the rescue. What is there to copy? Between the two versions, as a compare, contrast. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Qul, say, Ya Ahl al-Kitab, O people of the book, La taghlu fi dinikum. He says, do not go to extremes in your religion. We are made to say, tell that to the Jews and the Christians, don't go to extremes in your religion. Wala taqulu ala Allah illa al-haq. And don't say anything about Allah except the truth. Inna mal masih, most certainly the Messiah, translated Christ. Isa ibn Maryama, Jesus the son of Mary, Rasulullah, is a messenger of Allah, wa kalimatuhu, and a word proceeding from him, al-qaha ila Maryam wa ruhum minhum, which he bestowed upon Mary, and a spirit proceeding from him. Fa'aminu billahi wa rusulihi, so believe in Allah and his messenger, Jesus. He's a messenger of God. 
love him, respect him, revere him, follow him, but don't worship him. He is not God. And he is not the begotten son of God. God doesn't beget. Begetting is an animal act. It belongs to the lower animal functions of sex. We can't attribute such a quality to God, that God begot a son. When you say that, Allah Bari Ta'ala reacts very strongly. He reacts very strongly. In the Holy Quran, in Surah Maryam, our young Qari was reading from Surah Maryam. Chapter 19. Maryam, where you find Maryam? In the index? Look for Maryam. 19. Very easy to find. The young Qari was reading from Ayah 27. We'll deal with that. But this is further down. Surah Maryam. Allah Bari Ta'ala says, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَنُ وَلَدَا And they say that Ar-Rahman, the merciful God, He has begotten a son. The Christians say, Jesus is the only begotten son. Begotten, not made. Have you heard that before? Have you heard that? The Christians say, Jesus is the only begotten son. Begotten, not made. This is all the churches say that. He is the only begotten son. God has sons by the tons in the Bible. He's got sons by the tons. Ton. You know what's a ton? 2,000 pound weight. Old, old weighing machine, you know. 2,000 pound makes one ton. He's got sons by the tons in the Bible. Son of God, son of God, son of God. The firstborn of God by the tons in the Bible. But they say, no, 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 Jesus is not like that. He's not like Adam. Adam was created by God. He's described as a son of God in the Bible. But it's not like that. Jesus is begotten, not made. Not like Adam. Adam was made by God. Jesus is begotten. <laughs> so I've been asking this English-speaking people, the British and the American, I said, look, this is a foreign language you're talking. I, English is not my mother tongue. When you say begotten, not made, what are you trying to emphasize? Will you please explain? And believe me, no Englishman or American with the name can ever explain to you what he means. You ask him, simply say, look, English is not my language. Sir, you say begotten, not made. What are you really trying to tell me? What are you, what are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to emphasize? You see, I can call any one of you, young people. My son. If I call you my son, you mind? Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, yes, stand up, stand up. If I call you my son, you have any objection to that? I'm sure your father also, if he hears me calling you my son, he'll be happy. Your mother also will be happy. <laughs> Am I right? You know, he says, look, I love you, you know, like my own child, like my own son, I call you my son. One day I visit your house. What's your name? Ahmed. Ahmed, my name? Masha. <laughs> So, I come to your house and ask your ma, I said, where's Ahmad, my son? So she says, he's just gone out, he's coming back just now, sit down, uncle, I sit down, and you come and I embrace you, my son, my son. Hmm? You're happy, the whole family is happy. But my companion, who doesn't know our relationship, he is asking me, is he really your son? <laughs> So I says, no, you see this young man, he treats me like a father, like a grandfather, eh, a grand old uncle, and I call him a son, okay? But instead if I said, yes, he's my begotten son, you know, the meaning changes. What I'm saying now, I'm saying you're a bastard. In a beautiful language, he's my begotten, he's not his father's son, he's begotten by me. What I'm saying, he's a bastard. <laughs> so he says, uncle, what do you say? I said, no, I don't mean that. I don't mean that. But I'm telling him, my companion, doesn't he look like my son Yusuf? What am I saying? That is a bastard. Astaghfirullah. Can you see? This is for, <laughs> for embarrassing you. <laughs> so, begetting is an animal act. It belongs to the lower animal functions of sex. How can you attribute such a quality to God? So Allah reacts. 
وقالوا اتخذ الرحمن ولدا and they say that الرحمن the merciful God has begotten a son so لقد جئتم شيئا عدا is one of the most abominable assertion that one can make the worst swearing you can give Allah is this like the worst swearing I can give you is to swear your mother anybody if I swear your mother it's the worst swearing otherwise you argue and debate with me here you give me trouble I say go man go you are a bloody ox go you are a donkey I say go you are a fool what do you do you laugh it off he said, eh, the old man, maybe he's too tired. Maybe he's taken some pills, some medicine. You know, he's going off his rocker. You laugh, you laugh. But as soon as I take your mother's name, I say, uncle, I don't want to hear one more word now. Look, I'm going to lose all the respect I have for you. It's already gone. Respect is already gone. Once I take your mother's name, the respect is already gone. But if you want to save your face, say, look, I'm going to lose all the respect for you. Don't take my mother's name. Don't take my daughter's name. Don't take my wife's name. Call me what you like. Call me donkey. Call me ass. Call, call me uh, uh, ox. Call me monkey. Call me what you like. But don't take my mother's name. Am I right? Don't take my mother's name. So Allah reacts. This is laqajitum shayyan idda. This is the most abominable assertion one can make. Takadus samawatu yatafatarna minhu. And the skies are ready to burst. وَتَنْشَقَّ الْأَرْضُ And the earth to split asunder وَتَخِرُّ الْجِبَالُ حَدَّ And the mountains to fall down in utter ruin. Such a swearing they're giving Allah. If the heavens had feelings like you, emotions like you, Allah says, the heaven would have fallen down. And the earth would have split asunder. And the mountains fall down in utter ruin if they had feelings and emotions like you. They are inanimate. They have no feelings, no emotions. You and I who have feeling and emotions, and this is what they're abusing Allah, the worst swearing they can give Allah is this, how do we react? I'm asking, how do we react? <laughs> it's a joke. The whole Muslim world, the Arabs and the non-Arabs, the Malaysians, the Pakistanis, the Bangladeshis, the New Kenyans, the Ghanaians, Nigerian Muslims all over the world, the whole bang lot of us, we take it as a joke. Allah says, is the worst swearing they're giving me. As if Allah is crying, he says, look what they're swearing me like this. And we laugh, <laughs> like a monkeys. We all of us, eh? The Arab and the Ajab, the whole bank lot. It's a joke for us. Therefore, we are in this plight. When you go home, and your mother tells you, he says, you know my son, this next door, this neighbor, he was swearing me like this. He was calling me a whore, a harlot, a bitch. Can you sleep? Can you eat? Hmm? Your mother tells you, that guy, neighbor, this is how he's swearing your mother. Can you sleep? Can you eat? Enjoy your food? You want to shut up that guy for good? And if you can't do it, he says, hire a gang. Now man cost you 10,000 shillings. He says, do away with him. Shut his mouth for good. Silence him for good. No. Your mother, you love her, your wife, your daughter, you love them. That's how much we love our wives and daughters. But when Allah cries, it's a big joke. The whole Muslim world, I'm telling you, the whole Muslim world, nobody reacts. Nobody reacts. I haven't come across a single Muslim who reacts to this. Man, the ocean, the people are telling you, Jesus is the only begotten son, begotten not made. What do you say to that? <laughs> like monkeys, we all laugh. No. What is the true position? The young child, he read beautifully from Surah Maryam, Ayah 27. First is, yes, the miracle that he will speak to the people in childhood and in maturity. In childhood and in maturity. And we look in the Surah that the young man read. He read. I don't know what made him to read that. I didn't tell him, Allah, I don't know. I don't know the young man. First time in my life I see him. Why he read these ayahs, I don't know. As he was giving me instructions what to say. As he was giving me instructions, he said, look, uncle, <laughs> in case you drift off into something, look, he says, look, this is something you should deal with. <laughs> That's what the young child was telling me. He started reading. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. فَأَتَتْ بِهِ قَوْمَهَا تَحْمِلُهُ At length, 
she brought the babe to her people, carrying him in her, in, in, carrying him in her arms. Previous verses, verse 16 of Surah Maryam. It speaks about Maryam alayhi salam after she became pregnant and before the delivery of the child, she retired to a remote place in the east for the delivery of the child. And after the child was delivered, she brings the child back to her village, carrying him in her arms. Qalu, <coughs> they said, the Jews, her people, they said, Ya Maryamu, laqad jikti shayan fariya. So truly, an amazing thing has that brought. Shocked, amazed. We know you're not a married girl. How do you bring about this bastard child walking around shamelessly in the street? That's the insinuation, the charge. Ya Ukta Haruna, so sister of Harun, coming from such a noble family, ancestry, of the Nabis of the Bani Israel in that family. Ya Ukta Haruna, ma kana abu kimra asawim, wa ma kanat ummuki baghiya. He says, your father was not a man of evil, nor your mother a woman unchaste. Insinuating, how is it that you brought this bastard child into the world? Your father was a good man, you come from the noble family of the prophets of the Bani Israel, and your mother was a good woman, how is this you come about with this bastard child without a husband? What is she to do? Can she tell them, are these Jews in the mood to listen to her explanation that look I heard a voice, the angel of God came to me and gave me the good news, of the birth of a holy son. Are they in the mood to listen to her? To accept her explanation. Would you, if your sister came along to you, he says, brother, you know, I, I had heard some voices and now I'm carrying a baby. Hmm? You believe her? Hmm? Your own sister. You know, she never lied to you in, your, in her life. But now she's telling you she heard voices and she's carrying a baby. You believe her? Hmm? Your mother, in the absence of your father for a long time. Your mother says she had a dream and now she's carrying a baby. You believe her? <laughs> How can you believe this Jewess? How can anybody believe her? Huh? This is she heard voices and now she's carrying a baby and she delivered a baby. What is she to do? She knew that this child was no ordinary child. So for Asharat Ilay, so she points to the babe and ask him. Ask him. They said, قَالُوا كَيْفَ نُكَلِّمُ مَنْ كَانَ فِي الْمَهْدِ سَبِيَّا He said, how can you talk to one who's a child in the cradle, the baby? How can you talk to a baby? And by a miracle, Hazrat Isa a.s. spoke from his mother's arms. So, قَالَ إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ Most certainly I am the servant of Allah. آتَانِيَ الْكِتَابِ He's given me revelation. وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيَّا And he has made me a prophet. He defended his mother against an unbelieving audience from his mother's arms as an infant. First miracle of Jesus. Copying, copying. Muhammad copied this. Hmm? From your book. Your first miracle. Your first miracle of Jesus in the Bible. I'm opening Gospel of Saint John. Gospel of Saint John. Uh, John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The first miracle, chapter 2, the first miracle. On the third day, there was a marriage at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the marriage with his disciples. When the wine gave, way, gave out, means they ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. They went to a marriage feast at Cana with his disciples and they ran short of wine, W-I-N-E, wine, khamar. So the mother of Jesus comes to him, he says, look my son, these people, they are in trouble, their wine has run out. I know you got some miraculous powers, help them. So Jesus says, woman, 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 what have I to do with you? My time is not yet. Is that how you talk to your mother? Huh? You call your mother woman. In Swahili, is there a word for ma, your mother? Is there a word? Or you call her ma, woman, your mother? What do you call her? Woman. In Hebrew language, is there no word for mother? This is Arabic, Hebrew, um, um, ma, mother. 
but he doesn't call her mother. His mother, the one who bore him for nine, carried him for nine months, bore all the insults and the injuries, all the calumnies and the insults that she bore on account of this child because she couldn't point to a father for the child. Now when he's famous, world famous, bestowed with miraculous powers, and the mother is pleading, he says, look, help these people out. So he says, woman, woman, what have I to do with you? My time is not yet. But when he's persuaded further, he says, bring the wax, wine, empty barrels of that empty barrels, fill it up with water. And he turned water into wine. The first miracle of Jesus, he turned water into wine. And since then, wine has flowed like water in Christendom. <laughs> Everything, everything, birthday party, wine, wedding party, wine, Christmas party, wine, Easter party, wine. You can't do without wine. It's like water. Wine is flowing like water. First miracle of Jesus, in the Quran, he defends his mother against an unbelieving audience. First miracle in the Bible of Jesus, he turns water into wine. I'm telling you, so take your choice. Which would you prefer? The Quranic miracle? But the biblical miracle, the choice is yours. So the main point of difference, the real difference between us and the Christian, the real difference is the divinity of Christ. That's the real point. Anything else, we can come to terms. Muslim says, no eating of the flesh of swine. The guy says, pork chops is very nice, man. Hmm? So we'll argue, we'll debate the pros and cons, and the guy will tell you at the end, he say, well, you have a point there. No alcohol. The Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, whatever intoxicates in greater quantity is forbidden even in smaller quantity. No excuse for a nip or a tot, a little bit. There's no little bit in Islam. Whatever intoxicates in greater quantity is forbidden even in smaller quantity. So he argue and debate. He says, you know, now and then, when you drink, you know, you are more uh, free to talk, you become more fluent, yeah, all the fears, inhibitions go out of you. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We argue and we debate. He says, you know, you can become an alcoholic. Just a little nip, innocent, one percent, yeah, you can become an alcoholic. And there are millions of alcoholics. They started an innocent drink, one percent, that's all. Because this beer is only one percent. There are millions, 11 million drunkards in America and 44 million heavy drinkers. And Jimmy Swaggart, in his book on alcohol, he says, between the two, I make no difference, like a good Muslim. Whether you are a heavy drinker or you are a drunkard, he said, to me, there's no difference. Between the 44 million and the 11 million, that means 55 million drunkards. It's a good state of affairs. Accidents in Zambia, Kaunda, was saying, he said, I'm not prepared to lead a, a nation of drunkards. He calls a spade a spade. In my country, they don't call people drunkards. They call them alcoholics. <laughs> you know, the guy's sick, the poor fellow is sick, you know, alcoholic. <laughs> He's a sickness. Kaunda says, drunkards, I'm not prepared to lead a nation of drunkards. Accidents, accidents. And every other watering place in, in Kenya, I'm sorry, that's Zambia. Zambia. I've been there. You know, you restaurant, every restaurant you stop, you feel like having a cold drink, beer, beer, wine, beer. Every day you stop, beer, 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 beer. Accidents, 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 killing people on the road and so many other. So you argue and you debate and the Christian will tell you, well, you have a point there. You know, if everybody was thinking like you, the world would be a happier place. <laughs> Dancing with other people's wives and daughters. Again, we'll argue and we'll debate, and the guy says, no, you have a point there. He doesn't get emotional. The non-Muslim won't get emotional. You argue and you debate, and you show your point, and say, look, these are the harms. Marriages, a lot of people find their wives on the dance floor, and they also lose them on the dance floor. You find them there on the dance floor, and you lose them also on the dance floor to another man. The, the lures, the attraction of the dance is illicit sex. No man will go to dance with his own wife. If there's a law, you want to dance, you go and dance with your wife. I dance with mine, you dance with yours. Nobody will go to the dance. You know that? <laughs> yes. It's the other man's wife. You know, I can fondle your wife, and in turn, I can't help with you fondle mine. But that's the lure of the dance floor is the other man's wife. Other, other woman. At home, why don't you dance at home with your wife? Huh? 
No, 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 you want to go to the dance hall, to the ballroom. Why? The other man's wife, the other man's wife. This is it. So you show the dangers and the guy says, no, you have a point there. Again and again, I have to, I've been talking to the non-Muslim and he says, the only time they get emotional is when it comes to the subject of Jesus. He said that Jesus is God and the begotten Son of God and he died for your sins. So we say he's not God and he's not the begotten Son of God and he didn't die for your sins. His salvation depends on that. Salvation, easy, cheap. You just got to believe. The Muslim poor fellow, he's got to pray five times a day. He's got to fast for one whole month in Ramadan. He's got the straight jacket in his life. No drinking, no gambling, no dancing, no courting, no de Man, his straight jacket in his life. As a Christian, you are a free man. You can enjoy yourself. And Christ has paid for it. Whatever you do, Christ has paid for it. <laughs> no, if it is true, it's the most fantastic system, Allah. I, I would recommend to everybody, if it is true that somebody can die for your sins, to me is the most fantastic religion. I don't have to do anything, man. As a Muslim, I have to wake up early in the morning, winter and summer, and late at night, Isha. No, man. This is easy. Christianity, you just believe salvation is yours. That's what the Christian says. If it's true, Fantastic, if it was true. But I'm asking, he says, Christ died for your sins. I said, what sins? He said, the original sin. You know, Adam and Eve, they disobeyed. For that, Allah kicked them out of the garden. The original sin, the first sin of Adam, it entered the world. So now his children, they're all inheriting that sin. Today, we are on earth five and a half billion little Adams and Eves, all of us. Five and a half billion, 5,500 million Adams and Eves on this earth. And everybody goes to hell. Everybody goes to hell. For what? For the sin of Adam. Now, there's no way you can wash that sin. No way, no way, says the Christian. The only way is you believe that Christ died for your sins, and you are saved. You are punished for something you didn't do, and you are rewarded again for something you didn't earn. Fantastic religion. It's fantastic, Allah, it's fantastic. You are punished for something you didn't do, and now you're rewarded again for something you also didn't earn. Everything free. <laughs> beautiful, that's beautiful, beautiful, if it's true. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm asking. I'm asking the Christian. I said, look, brother, did Adam ask you before eating the apple? No. Did you ask your wife before eating the apple? He says, no. Then how can God hold you responsible? Simple as that. Did God ask you? And I, Adam, I mean. Did he ask you, shall I eat the apple? Did he? No. You were not there. That's 6,000 years ago, according to Christian counting. 6,000 years ago it happened. You were not there. How can God put you into hell for that? It's the most nonsensical idea. But 1,200 million Christians of the world, the most leading nations on earth, the guy who lands on the moon, he believes in it. The white man, the American, the Britisher, the French, the German, the Swedes, they believe in it. They can't be wrong, can they be? Hmm, the most nonsensical idea. Adam and Eve eat the apple, and five billion people go to hell. To save yourself, you go and believe that Christ died for your sins and salvation is yours. Then we also have differences. So look, Christ was not killed and he was not crucified. Debate, debate. But now, I have these little booklets of mine. I have to work through some bodies and societies that they should be able to give them to you. I have been sending them in the past, and for a long time there has been a break between South Africa and your country. You know, your trade embargo against South Africa. Now it's opening up, but, but no surface mail. No surface mail between South Africa and here. We have to send everything by air. It's cheaper for me to produce a book, and it's more expensive to send it down. The book cost me more than twice, three times the amount just to send it to you. It's killing. But inshallah, we'll work out a system, get these booklets of mine, 
was Christ crucified? What was the sign of Jonah? What the Bible says about Muhammad? Muhammad, the natural successor to Christ, Christ in Islam. And master these little facts and go to town. The world is yours. The whole world is our diocese, our field of activity. So with these words, I'm very, very grateful for your, your bodies and societies at a minute's notice, at a minute's notice almost, has got this few hundred people or a few thousand people, my, my brothers and sisters, to come and listen to me, honoring me. May Allah honor you. Wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Anybody has got any questions, please line up here and the mic is here for you to ask questions. Please line up so we don't waste time, you know, don't drag your feet. Please come along and once we have established a line, there won't be any more. People keep on dragging the feet and coming one by one till midnight. We haven't got the time for that. Please line up. We want to give our Christian brothers the first opportunity. We are not discriminating against people, but we owe it. We owe more, I owe more to my Christian brothers who want to know things than to the Muslim. I'm always with you. And you always have the alims with you. Right? So if you are a Muslim, give the Christian brother a chance first. Give them a first opportunity first. The Christian. Are you Christian? No, then. Give the Christians a chance first. Are you Christian? Any Christians here? Are there any Christians right? Any Christian here? No? Okay, come, get started. You speak to the young man, yes. So this is a question from some lady. Mashallah. And uh, I've been trying to share with uh, my Christian friends. Right. But you know, they like the ideas. They say it's, uh, the books are so much convincing. But one thing is, I get a uh, problem is that they say, but this words which is used here, Islamic Propagation Center. Right. It is, this, these are propaganda. So you're trying to lure us into Islamic school propaganda. So uh -huh. I was trying, I, wanted, I just wanted you to explain to me yes. that thing. Yes. What is to propagate is to spread. You see, you propagate vegetables, fruits, by crossing, you know, by cutting slips and all that, you propagate. You propagate your family by getting married and begetting children. You propagate. It's not propaganda. You're propagating your species. You know, with your wife, children, God said, be ye fruitful and multiply in the Bible. So when you go and get married and beget children, you're propagating the human species. Hmm? You propagate plants, plants, you know, by grafting, grafting, you know, they graft plants, they graft plants, you know, to, so that the thing grows faster. Mango trees, it takes seven years, but a grafted tree, six months or a year, it starts bearing fruit. That's called grafting. You propagate the plant life. You propagate an idea. Means you spread the idea. That guy is finding this some f silly, funny idea that, you know, propagate means propaganda. But every person who opens his mouth, the Christian, what is he doing? In the street corners. He's stopping you, he wants to sell you a magazine, watchtower, awake. What is he doing? What is he doing? The Seventh-day Adventist, the Roman Catholics, that Otunga fellow. What was he saying? He's trying to propagate his idea. So, no, there's nothing wrong. You have a right, the Christian has a right to propagate. We also have a right to propagate, to spread the message. Thank you. My pleasure. Next one. until he believes that the gospel is the word of God, I mean the Injil. So I told him that uh, our Quran, it's promised in the Quran, Allah's promise that it will never be tempted. I mean no one will ever change it, it will remain the same till the day of judgment. 
So he told me that uh, then if for your Quran is like that, then why didn't God promise on our gospel, and which has already been tempered because Bible is not the real word of God. It's been tempered for so many years. So he told me that why why is it not the gospel? Why was it not promised by God? And why? What's that again? I mean, he's saying why why was the gospel not promised by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that it won't it won't change? It will remain the same. And why is it that the Quran was being promised on? Because the gospel was not the last book. The Quran is the last testament. See, the Christians and the Jews, the Jews have the Bible called the Old Testament. The Christian got the Old and the New put together, they call the Holy Bible. But it doesn't claim all truth. It doesn't. Jesus Christ, he says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye, you can't bear it now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Not him. Who? The spirit of truth. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself, but what things so shall he hear, that shall he speak. And he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me. Who? Jesus. There's somebody else coming, he said, who's going to glorify Jesus who's going to testify, who's going to guide you into all truth. And he says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. John chapter 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you. It is better for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I go, I will send him. Somebody other than Jesus. Yes. Then he says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. He says, by the fruits ye shall know them. In other words, if there were no prophets to come after him, he said, look, there is no prophets after me. I am the last and final messenger. Anybody else comes after me is a liar and a cheat. He didn't say that. He said, you must be on guard against the false ones. That means there is a false one and the true one. How do we know the true from the false? He said, by the fruits ye shall know them. The fruits of the prophet of God, Islam. If it did nothing, it created the biggest society of teetotalers in the world. 1,000 million people as a whole, they don't imbibe alcohol, as a people as a whole. We have our drunkards, and we have our adulterers and our gamblers, we have. There are many Muslims who can, you know, knock a Christian down under the table in drinking, right? But, as a people as a whole, the Muslim is the biggest society of teetotalers in the world. If Muhammad did nothing but this, you can't pay him enough. You can't praise him enough. So, Jesus Christ didn't close the book. This is somebody coming after me, and he will guide you into all truth. And we say that Prophet is Muhammad Next one. Uh, I'm called Abrashid. I'm from student. Uh, very much in youth works in Nairobi. Uh, my question is, my question is uh, to when we argue with some of the Christians on some of the verses that I will mention in the Bible. For instance, in Matthew 17, verse 1 to 7, and uh, Matthew 3, chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, where the Father says that Jesus is my son in whom I am beloved. Sometimes the context, the way they explain, is not very clear, and we, don't, we really go out of arguments. In also John uh, chapter 6, verse 14, uh, this Jesus refers himself to us, the Son, and also here it's not very clear. The arguments are also, also very clear. John chapter 9. No, no, no. What is, what is the argument? What the argument is, is, is. What is the argument? The argument is that when we put across that the divinity of Jesus is not there, they will argue using these verses. Right. You learn to speak this simple, simple language. You see, going and getting embroiled in this verse and that verse and that verse, you can't achieve anything. Simple question, you ask the Christian. You say Jesus is God. He said yes. Is there a single place in your Bible, in any version of the Bible, let, look at me, look at me. In any version of your Christian Bible, where Jesus, no, no more, no more, no more, no more, no more, finish. No more line, finish. Please. Anywhere in the Bible where Jesus says, I'm God, or where he says, worship me. Is there a single statement in any Bible on earth, 
any version where Jesus says, I am God, or where he says, worship me. Is there? There isn't. There isn't. So all this talk about, you know, pulling here and pushing there, and you know, he said this, and did he say, I am God? Hmm? You people go out tomorrow morning and say, you know, Mr. Didat is the new president of Kenya. Huh? So somebody will ask you, did Mr. Didat claim that? You says, no. Then what they do with you? He says, God, my foot sack, man, don't waste time. If Didat said he is the president, then we'll want to know how, what, what makes him... Then you have a right to ask. First thing is, I have to make the claim. I am the Pope of the Muslims. Did I claim that? No. You have no right. You have no right to say, Mr. Didat is the Pope of the Muslims. You have no right. I must make the claim, and then you have a right to examine my claim. Right? Same thing, Jesus. Look, look. You reading, I'm talking to you and you reading there, my son, I don't know, how can you do two things? <laughs> you see, when somebody's talking to you, you must look at the person. That's the honor you, you owe the person. So you ask him a question, he's asking you. So there is no such statement. On the contrary, Jesus says, I can of my own soul do nothing. I can of my own self do nothing. Can God do everything? Anything? Yes. What does Jesus say? He can do nothing. He said, of that day, no, no man, no, not the angels, not the sun, but the Father in heaven. So in his knowledge, he's not like God. In his power, is not like God. He says, his all power is given unto me, it's not mine. Where does he say, I'm God? Where does he say, worship me? That's all. Ask the Christian, where does your Jesus say, I'm God? Where does he say, worship me? Show me. Then we will discuss. Okay? Next question. Shall. The question is for another Christian. That's right. Um, the question is that we say we Muslim that Jesus is not God. Right. And in their Bible, John 10, chapter 5, Jesus is trying is defining himself as So explain. Where is that Christian? Ask him to show me that Jesus claims to be God. John in chapter 5. Let him come along and find it for me. Here's the Bible, John 10, chapter, huh? Chapter? John 10, It says there, John 10, 30, he said, I and my father are one. Does that mean he said, I'm God? You said, the guy says that Jesus is his God. He said, I and my father are one. Hmm? That's John 10, 30. So, does that mean he's God? Where is that Christian? Let him come along and say, look, this is what Jesus says. Then we will discuss. He said, look, does that mean he's God? Hmm? Me and my wife, we are one. Adam and Eve in the garden, they were one. They were one flesh. The Bible says they were one flesh. It's just like a sausage. Where there's a sausage? Adam and Eve, where there's a sausage? No. But they say one flesh. What it means is that if Adam say, let's eat that grapes, it's right. If Eve said, let's go and swim, Adam says, right. In other words, whatever one wants to do, the other wants to do, they are one. But Adam is Adam and Eve is Eve. Adam is man and Eve is woman. Now you understand? One in what? In what you want to do. Everybody is one in wanting to listen silently. No, no disturbance, no noise. Everybody is united in that. Everybody is united. You don't want people to make noise while I'm talking to you? No. So you are one. But one in what? You take other, each other's wives? Huh? Take each other's property? Huh? One in what? In what you want to do. One in what? I and my father are one in what? In power, majesty, knowledge, what? Now understand? So let the Christian come forward if he's here and say, now read, then I'll ask him. I'll ask him a few questions. Okay? Huh? <laughs> right, next one. Invite him. Invite him. That uh, there are some verses of the Quran they claim have been abrogated or uh, uh, or cancelled. Some of the Holy verses are being abrogated by other verses of the Holy Quran, and they see that as a correction for uh, 
a mystic being done and being corrected after the Holy Prophet by uh, the fourth Caliph of Islam, Uthman bin Affan. How would you argue that? Now you must show me the abrogation. See, if you are the one who say the Quran is abrogated, what verse is abrogated? Means it is done away with. Abrogated means it's done away with. Which one in the Quran? If you have knowledge, you show us that look, this verse was in the Quran and now it's taken out. That's abrogation. Because this was, you were allowed to drink alcohol and then the Quran now says you can't drink alcohol. Both the verses are there in the Quran, if there were such a thing. That one place it tells you you can drink alcohol, another place says you can't drink alcohol. Then one of them is contradicting the other. One is abrogating the other. Is there any such verse in the Quran? Is there any such verse in the Quran? Is there any such teaching in the Quran that you were told don't eat the pig and next minute they said now you eat the pig. Is there any such thing in the Quran? One minute said don't gamble, another place said now you can gamble. Is there any such thing in the Quran? That's abrogation. Show me if you know anything, or if there's anybody else, you know, who's your master, teacher here. Call him, call him. It's a question I was asking. No, no. Where is the questioner? Where is the questioner? Huh? Where is he? Why? Why does he make you into a scapegoat? You know, to come forward and make a fool of yourself on his behalf? You see? Therefore, now you're making a fool of yourself. I'll say, now you show me my son. Okay, look, this verse is abrogated. Then I can answer you. You're just making statements, right? Huh? Yeah, yeah. But now the guy who's got that thing, that sickness, he must come forward. Then I can ask him, what are you referring to, my son? I'm asking you, now what I say, you don't know. That guy is at home. Huh? Or he's hiding in behind his wife's skirt. What is he doing? Hmm? Right, next one. Um, ask me a question. It's a very simple question. What is your name, sir? My name is Shari Baba. This question is concerning leadership. We have leadership in Christianity and other religions. Some are big, some are small, and they conduct their affairs. We see them. Now, this question I put it to you is: How do we get? And who are the right Muslim leaders? Who can represent this? Well, every Imam in every masjid is your leader. He's supposed to know his facts. See, Imam, Imam in Arabic means a leader. You know that? Right. So, what is your problem? You go to a leader and find out. Speak to the Imam, ask him for a solution to your problem. And inshallah, he'll give it to you. Maybe it doesn't go down well. See, you have your, already you have your answer. You want to get a certain fixed answer. The man, like here, here, I've just come here. Man comes to me. He says, now can we build a house on top of a masjid, on the top of a mosque? He's asking me. So I said, look, did you ask your imam? Your leader? You know the man who's knowledgeable in your community? He said, yes. I said, what does he say? He said, no, you can't. So now why are you asking me? Huh? He wants to hear from me to say, yes, you can. So he can make mischief. I go to Canada, and everybody is asking me about interest. The Muslims from South Africa, a lot of them have migrated, and they have the money in building societies for which they get interest. They want to know about interest. So I say, it's haram. You know what that means? Forbidden. So what do we do with this money? Haram money. I said, give it to me. <laughs> I said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to dig, dig boreholes for the Africans in the hinterland with your interest money. With that shit money of yours, we're going to dig boreholes for people, helping people. He says, Jai is allowed? I says, that's allowed. Don't you don't eat it? I don't eat it. I'm going to use this for somebody's benefit. Give me the money. Nobody gives me the money. <laughs> What is that guy wanting is for me to say is halal. He's been asking everybody, everybody says haram, haram, haram. Now he wants Dida to say, no man, you can eat it. So now his conscience is... <laughs> so this is, you are not looking for a leader. If you take me for a leader, let's say in your heart and mind, you felt, look what Uncle Dida says must be haq. Then you ask me a question, 
then I give the answer, you are doubly bound to follow that. But no, no, no. You want an answer that suits you. And that guy is not giving it to you. So you go to the next fellow, next Imam, the Shaykh. And he's giving you an answer that doesn't suit you. So you go to the next guy. What are you looking for? You are a devil. This is devilish. <laughs> no. If you go to a man with the confidence that he is a knowledgeable fellow and he's got no ulterior motive in giving you the answer, whatever answer he gives you, you are bound. Finish. But no, you don't want that. When I say you, I'm not talking about you. And generally, everybody is doing that. He's asking different, different guys to get contradictory answers and in that he wants to find, get something that suits him. Therefore, we have new leaders. You see, you need a guy with the power of the sword, like Hazrat Umar, that when he made a judgment, you don't accept as a chop of your head. But no, that kind of leaders we haven't got. Next one. now that Allah is crying in the Quran. He's crying in the Quran. That these guys are swearing me. The worst swearing you can give Allah is this. What do you do about that? When I say you, I mean the whole Muslims. Nothing. Hmm? And if Allah wants to say this, you Khabis, you say you love me, hmm? you prepare to die for me, you prepare to do anything for me, and now they are swearing me and you laugh. It's a joke. Don't you deserve everything that's coming to you? Hmm? We ruled India for a thousand years. After a thousand years when partition takes place, the Muslim gets one quarter, the Hindu gets three quarter. Why? You didn't do the job. We ruled Spain for 800 years. After 800 years of Muslim rule, when we were kicked out, there was not one man left in that country to give the azan. What a failure. You didn't do the job. You enjoyed the Spanish woman. So, this is the law of God. If you do not carry out your duties and responsibilities, which Allah has imposed on you for being the khaira ummatin, best of people, He said, يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمًا خَيْرَكُمْ He'll substitute in your place another people. ثُمَّ لَا يَكُنُوا أَمْثَالَكُمْ Then they won't be like you rubbish. That's what Allah says. That's His law. You don't do the job, it's a get out of the way, man. You're rubbish, you're occupying valuable space. You're holding up the works. Get lost. That's what he's telling you. In Spain, after 800 years. The Christians in South Africa, in 300 years, they Christianized the whole bloody country. At the beginning of the century, Africa was 3% Christian. At the beginning of 1900, 3% Christian. Today they are 40%. And by the turn of the century, they want to make Africa a Christian continent. And every signs are that they'll succeed because we are prepared to do nothing. Hmm? We want to know about Bosnia, about Kashmir, about uh, Palestine. Then we tell we are, have a problem here ourselves. What are you doing here? Hmm? Your Bosnia is here. Your Bosnia is here. <laughs> Our Bosnia is here. My Bosnia is in South Africa. I'm telling you. But nobody cares. Nobody wants to do anything. You don't want to share your deen with the Africans. I'm talking about my own country. See, everybody is saying, the good guy, he said, we are not perfect. I said, look, talk to the guy. He said, no, we are not perfect. I said, when will you be perfect? Come on, come on, give me a time limit. Five years time, ten years time, fifty years time. Give me a time limit that in fifty years time, you'll become immaculate, good Muslims, all angels walking this earth, then you're going to talk. Give me a time limit. No time limit. So it's an excuse for not doing the job. We have to pull our own socks and say, let's work man, in our own environment, that our Bosnia doesn't happen here. My Bosnia doesn't happen in South Africa. In the meantime, we pray for our brothers. That's all. I can do is to pray for them. May Allah you know, help them to solve the problem, but we have a problem brewing here. And in South Africa, and all over the world. In Nigeria, in Ghana, it's all over the world. In the Sudan, 
everywhere. There's a problem brewing because we are not doing our job. I have a simple question. Among the questions, is there any is there any of them that's good? And if yes, then they go to heaven. Allah says that among the Jews and the Christians, min humul mu'minuna, there are good people. But the majority of them are perverted transgressors. That's what Allah says. So you do find good people among them. And the good man will get his reward. Depending upon his opportunity. Did you deliver the message to him? Even the good guy. Did you talk to him? No. You told him nothing about Islam. Many people when you talk about Islam, Islam they don't know what Islam is. Hmm? I've been going in my own country going to Joko T people. He says, uh, I want to see the manager. He says, what, 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 what company you come from? So I'm telling the receptionist, Islamic Propagation Center. So what? I say, Islamic Propagation Center. So what's that? He said, no, my, no, my. <laughs> Look, we didn't tell them what Islam is, what Islamic is. They don't know. They think we're worshiping statues in the masjid. Do you know that? People want to come and visit the mosque. When they come, at the back of the mind, you are worshipping man gods, women gods, monkey gods, elephant gods, snake gods. Because when they look at you, you look like a Hindi Indian. You look like an Indian. Right? Me too. We all look like Indians. And the, because the majority of the Indians in South Africa are Hindus, majority of the Indians in India are Hindus, they think every Indian is a Hindu. Worshipping the cow, worshipping the monkey, worshipping the snake. That's what they think. It's an opportunity for you to disabuse their minds. To educate them that what we are, what we believe. But you say, no, keep out. You are unclean. Our Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he invited the, the, the Christians of Najran to come and stay in his masjid, Masjid and Nabawi. They slept in the mosque, they ate in the mosque, and they had a dialogue for three days and three nights in the masjid. And when Sunday came, he offered them the masjid to offer their prayers, Christian prayers in the masjid. Are we that tolerant? No? You want to keep them at arm's length? And they are suspicious of you? There's something wrong with you guys? You know, the terrorists, the fundamentalists? <laughs> we are, we are, you know, we are a bad advertisement for Islam. Are you fundamentalists? Are you fundamentalists? Every Muslim, if you believe in the fundamentals of your faith, you are a fundamentalist. You believe in the... You believe in the Shahada? That's the fundamental of Islam. You're a fundamentalist. You, see? you believe that alcohol is haram? You're a fundamentalist. You see? So, no. They are using this ab word abusingly that as soon as you stand up for your faith, they label you terrorist, fundamentalist, that you start, you know, says, no, 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 don't talk, because otherwise that guy's going to label you. The Irish people, hmm? they are fighting the British, the Irish. The Irish are Christians, the British are Christians. The Irish are Catholics, they're fighting the Protestants. Are the Irish fundamentalists? No, they, they'll never use that word. The, the Jews, are they fundamentalists? Yes, everyone who holds on to some fundamentals of his faith is a fundamentalist. But this word is not specially reserved for us to beat you with. See, as soon as you open your mouth, you're a fundamentalist, he says, you know, good. Now you'll be debarred from coming to Kenya anymore. These I say he's a fundamentalist. <laughs> right, my son. Last question. Yes, uh, question is from the oh. ladies. Oh. And this one, that also on this one, are more on this issue, but you can tell them that. Now. Uh, yes. My question is, uh, I've seen most of the Christians when they go to the churches, they wear the shoes and so on. Uh, I would like kindly if you could tell me or tell us what was the Jesus prayer? Was he making the Salah like we are doing now? Is it in the Bible? If it is in the Bible, please let us know the chapter and so on. Please. How did Isa alayhi salam pray? He prayed like the Jews. He prayed like all the ordinary Jews. He was a Jew, born Jew. His mother was a Jew, Jewess. Hmm? And he was brought up as a Jewish child. So if he prayed, he prayed like the Jews. If he fasted, he fasted like the Jews. Naturally. Naturally. And we have some examples in the Christian Bible. 
that was his last days on earth, Jesus Christ, he went to the garden of Gethsemane with his disciples. And he said, wait and watch. Meaning keep guard. Keep guard. Pass up. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed to God. So I'm asking the Christian, how does a man fall on his face and pray? Except the way we Muslims do. Sujood, falling on the man's face is sujood, making the sizda. He made the sizda and he prayed to God. He said, oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me. Remove, remove the difficulty from me, but not as I will, but as thou wilt. As a good Muslim, he submits his will to the will of Allah. So, this is what he did. And Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam and they fell on their faces and prayed. And Abraham fell on his face and prayed. And Joshua fell on his face and prayed. This is how they prayed. Up to the third century of the Christian era, that you have to look up. That this is his, his trial and tribulation in the Garden of Gethsemane. Garden of Gethsemane in the Gospel of St. John, St. Luke. You read that towards the end chapter 19 or 24 at the end that he, when he went to the garden of Gethsemane with his disciples and he said wait and watch and he went a little further and fell on his face ask the Christian how does a man fall on his face and pray except the way we Muslims do hmm? inshallah uh, there are two questions here there is a list of typewritten uh, now this is not called really a question you see now that means you come from home with the things all typed out, mashallah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, uh, it says you're not on comparative religion, not on comparative religion. You want fatwas, fatwas from me, you know, the masla, masail. For that, my dear sisters, you have to go to your alim. And if they don't know your answers to your problems, then replace them, get some new alims. Right? Your masla, masail, you know. Why you cut the throat of the chicken, why you do Go and ask your alims, and if they can't supply the answer, replace them. Comparative religion is my field. You ask me something, if I don't know, inshallah, I'll try and find out for you. Here are two questions here. It says here, when you ask a Christian about the verse, verse poems they are, and the chapters which have been thrown out, the verses, they say the same can be applied to the Islam as you have different sects, but it is the basis, foundation of the religion that is important. What would you say? Reply. Uh, then if this is the lady's question, she's already given the reply here. You see, that this, with regards to the Quran, as far as my knowledge goes, there is only one Quran in the world. You go to China, same Quran. The Arabic Quran I'm talking about. Translations, there will be variations in the choice of language between one translator and another. But basically the Arabic Quran, you go to Indonesia, same, Nigeria, same, Turkey, same, wherever you go on earth, there's only one Quran that I know, and this is that Arabic Quran, left by our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. With regards to the Bible, Day by day, every day a new version is coming out. Every day. I don't want to start giving them to you. Only yesterday I bought a new revised version of the Bible and what would they have done? One place, the Bible says that God Almighty killed 50,070 persons for looking into a box. The ark, the ark, box. God warned them, look into that box, I'll kill you. And he allowed 50,070 people to look into the box. How do you look into a box? You got to single file. You have to follow in a line. Paying respect to the Queen of England if she's dead. One by one you go along, pay respects. To Mandela, you pay respects. To Hani, you pay respects. One by one. Can you imagine somebody lying in state here and all of you are to see that person's face? How long will it take? Single file, just you people here, and 50,070, God Almighty is waiting. He allows 50,070 to go through, and then he kills them all. <laughs> Can you imagine? If I told you, look, I'm a tyrant, a bully, I have a box there, I said, look, anybody looking into that box, I'll kill him. Hmm? Very unreasonable, but that's me. I said, I'll kill anybody who look into that box. The first guy who's passing, he looks into the box. 
I said, hey, what are you? They said, sir, please forgive me. You know, I forgot. But if still I'm a sadist, you know, I get pleasure in killing people. I kill that one man. And I save 50,070 by killing one man. God Almighty doesn't do that. The loving Father in heaven, he allows 50,070 to pass that box. In single file, it will take weeks, weeks for the 50,000 to pass. He allows them all and he kills them all, 50,070. Hmm? Merciful God. If he killed the first guy, if he stopped the first one, he would have saved 50,069. So now, the latest Bible we bought from here, from Mombasa. It says Revised Standard Version. That verse, that 50,000, they took out and they're good only 70 now. God only killed 70. And the 50,000 is put in a margin at the bottom, at the bottom. In small writing, it says in the Hebrew, it says 50,070. But now in English, for you fools, he made the 70. Because you can't swallow the 50,000. You can swallow 70. By the minute, by the minute they are changing. What can you do? <laughs> this is, I only discovered because I was teaching them and I looked up here. He says, come to 70, I said, 70? 70, what happened? Every Bible I've seen in my life, I've got 50,070. So they put at the, at the bottom, this is in small type, small type, that in Hebrew Bible, it is 50,070. Uh, this is the last question here, is it? I believe the spiritual life is like a race. Each person has a lane, lane to God. Each religion has a lane to God. What the Muslim religions, religion leading and Christian leaders are doing is to cross and triple each other. And so the followers fall. Today, what man needs is peace. Christians don't have it. Muslims don't have it. What man needs is health. Mankind does not have it. Can the religious leaders change the approach? I treat people as a doctor, and I am able to be blessed from Muslims and Christians, Hindus, etc. Dr. M. A. Okong. So, everyone says we want peace. How do you get peace? This is the question. The Muslim says you get peace by submitting to the will of God. You submit to his will, he says, don't drink alcohol. He says, Amanna Saddakna. I hear and I obey. Don't gamble. He says, Amanna Saddakna. Be courteous. You know, give charity. Be regular in your salat. Give zakat. Whatever Allah tells you to do, you do. There is peace. Peace between you and God and peace between man and man. Everybody is talking about peace. Everybody talks about brotherhood. But a system is required. You need a system. Everybody talks. The Hindu says there is one God. The Christian says there is one God. The Muslim says there is one God. Am I right? Everybody says there's God is one. Nobody says there's two gods or three gods. But now in the concept, in the concept they differ. He says, the Christian says there's one God. But I said, you say the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. Your formula, your trinity. Father is God, Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. But they're not three gods, but one God. Am I right? He said, yes. But you said there's only one God. The Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. But they're not three gods, but one God. I said, what language are you talking? Is that English? Sounds it. Sounds like English. It's not English. It's gibberish. Rubbish. Nonsense. How can be? Father is a person, Son is a person, and the Holy Ghost is a person. But they're not three persons, but one person. What language is that? I'm asking the Englishman, what language are you talking? Person, 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 but not three persons, but one person. No, I have a right to correct him. Person, 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 but not three persons, but one person. I said, what language are you talking? If you and your two other brothers are identical triplets, we can't make out the difference between the three of you. If one of you commit murder, can we hang the other? He says, no. I said, why not? You all look alike. He said, no, he's a different person. I said, right. If you're a different person, you're different. You can never be the same. But now, the Quran tells us to tell them, Wala taqulu salasa, don't say trinity. In tahu khairul lakum. This is, stop it. It'll be better for you. Innam Allah ilahum wahid. For your Allah is one Allah. He's not three in one. So I have to tell him that. If he's offended, I can't be helped. 
He, the Christian, in turn, he wants to save me from hellfire. He said, all your salat and zakat and hajj and psalm are like filthy rags, the Christian says. Salvation only comes through the blood of the Lord Jesus, he says. So I have to ask him. Allah is telling me to ask him, Sakul hatu burhanakum. Produce your proof. So he produced the proof in his Bible. So I said, right, let me see what it says. I said, you know, Jesus, when he returned to that upper room, after his alleged crucifixion, he goes inside and he wishes his disciples, Shalom Alaikum in Hebrew, peace be unto you. And his disciples were terrified. Why were they terrified? I'm asking the Christian, why were they terrified? He said, no, they're thinking they're seeing a ghost. I said, did he look like a ghost? This is no. Then I said, why should they think the man is a ghost when he didn't look like one? Then Jesus Christ is trying to assure them that is not what they're thinking. They're thinking he's come back from the dead. So he says, Tazameni mikono yangu na migu yangu. He says, behold my hands and my feet. Tazameni mikono yangu na migu yangu. Yagua ni mimi mminyere. That it is I myself. Mshige ni mshige ni wane. Say, handle me and see. For the spirit has no flesh and bones as you see me have. Now the guy, I'm talking to him in his language from his own Bible to say he's not what you're thinking. The man is telling you, handle me and see, I'm not a ghost, I'm not a spook, I'm not a spirit. And they felt him. The Bible says they felt him and they believed not for joy. They were overjoyed and wondered, what happened man? We thought the man was dead and buried. So he said, have you heard any meat? Nachakula, chachote, hapa. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb and he took it and he ate. In the very side to prove what? That he's a ghost, he's a spook, he's a spirit. No. That I'm the same fellow man, damn fools. What are you afraid of me for? Now I have to disabuse his mind. The guy is not happy. He wants peace. But he wants peace at my price. He wants me to become a Christian. He wants to steal my children. That's how he wants peace. The Hindu says there's one God. There's only one God. My Hindu brothers, I'm, my forefathers were Hindus for 5,000 years. They say there's only one God. So I'm asking my Hindu cousins, he said, who is Rama? He says, God. Who is Krishna? He says, God. Who is Buddha? He says, God. Who is Hanuman? He says, God. Who is Ganesh? He says, God. Who is Sita? He says, God. I said, look, man, you told me there's only one God. <laughs> he said, yes. But you gave me man gods, woman gods, and animal gods. Now the poor fellow doesn't know. So I have to talk to him. I have to disabuse his mind. I want to him to have peace with me. You see, so now the thing is everybody wants peace, but everybody says on his terms. The Hindu says on his terms, the Jew says on his terms, the Christian says on his terms, and the Muslim says the same. So we said, now let us come, let's reason together and see now where a common denominator can be established between us that we can have this worship, a fellowship of faith in the worship of the one true God. Wa alhamdulillah uh, shukran, Jazakallah khairan. Uh, before I finish, I would like to tell the ladies who have uh, given quite a lot of questions here, but most of these questions, most of these questions are on uh, fiqh and on uh, some, uh, they are not on comparative religion. Sheikh Ahmed Didat and his assistant say, Sheikh Didat answers questions on comparative religion, not on fiqh and other things and uh, other areas. For those, they say, please contact your ulama. Now, coming back to Sheikh Didat, I think I'm sure you will uh, agree with me. We have all, of course, we have all enjoyed the talk, and I'm sure we have benefited a lot. And Sheikh Didat. Uh, inshallah, God will give him long life, long prosperous life. But I think he will be very happy here and hereafter to see that amongst you, several didats come up. So, so that uh, we pray that he lives very long, but being a human being, one day he will have to leave us. And he will be very happy and very satisfied to see that many of you, especially the young ones, become like many didats and go all over the land.
And this does not come. As he told us, the way he, he started, he started by reading books, old books, old uh, magazines, and so on and so forth. So his emphasis is on reading. Uh, I think we cannot say more than what he has already said, and you all have formed your opinion about Sheikh Bidat, and as I've said, we pray for God to give him the rest of his life to be as useful as it has been all through. Amen. Now, we would like to thank uh, all of us on your behalf. We'd like to thank the Young Muslim Association for arranging this gathering. We'd also like to thank the Sa'ali Muslim Club to provide the venue and also to thank the group which is known as CCPC. Don't think this is the Soviet Union, no. This one is known as, it's a group of young people known as Citizen, Citizen Crime Prevention Committee. This is a group of young people who help the police to see that the area where they are living, there is no crime. And these are the young people who have done all the preparation here, mashallah, mashallah. arranging chairs, arranging the uh, seating arrangement and all. So uh, please, we all should join hands to pray to these young ones to keep up the spirit and to become uh, future didats. Now, I think uh, everything that has a beginning has to have an end. And I think we say, say thank you very much, Sheikh Didat, and Jazakallahu Khairan. Thank you. You and your team for making the journey all the way from South Africa to come to us, to join hands with us. And I'm sure the people you had uh, lessons with on Tuesday and today, the young ones, I'm sure they will take your lessons very seriously. And uh, inshallah ta'ala, God will bring up more didats. Inshallah. Uh, I think we, I'm asked to finish with the, the dua, and the Imam here will come to say the dua. Amen, Amen.